There was a recent statistic that about 75% of Americans um, acknowledge that they cry about money regularly. And you would think these are people that make under $75,000 a year, right? No, it would include people who make over $250,000 a year. What could you tell us about Judaism's perspective on money and wealth? Oh, I love that question. Judaism views money as a resource that we are here to utilize to advance God's purpose for the world, which is to perfect this world and bring it to its messianic potential. So it's a tool that we utilize and it could be used for good and God forbid it could use for, be good for the negative, but it really is a very powerful, impactful tool for us to create positive change in the world. How does Judaism's perspective that you just shared differ from the secular, like money mindset? I would say in two distinct ways. Number one, like I said before, we view um, money as a, a tool. So it's never an end, it's the means. So money is a means to a goal, which is perfecting this world and um, advancing that messianic vision that God has, has for the world, for the, pur the purpose of creation, right? So that in and of itself is a very distinct um, um, difference because in, in a more secular world, more secular perspective, money is very often perceived as the end, right? The end is the money. Whereas by us, the end really is the mission. It's just that we have one of the many means that God gives us is money. Another interesting difference would be that it's not about me, it's about God meaning it's not self-serving. It's not a tool that is meant to be self-serving. It's a tool that is meant to serve God in this world, to create a dwelling place for Him in the world, to reveal His presence so that this world can be perfected. So those two perspectives are uniquely different. So it's, it's a means, not an end, and it's a means of, means of service to whom? To God Almighty, our Creator, not to us. So one second, you mean to tell us that I'm making money for God? Can, can you can you give an example of what that means? How am I making money and trying to be wealthy for God? Absolutely. So you're making money to advance your mission as an individual to perfect God's world, to bring God into the world, right? So God gives us re a resource called money. Part of that resource that he gives us, he says, you help me distribute it to other people and the rest you get to utilize to do all the positive things that I've told you in the blueprint for creation called the Torah that you can do to perfect the world. So a percentage of that money is meant for us to help others in need. It's not our money, it's Hashem, is, God is using us as a custodians or agents of that money. And then another percentage is for us to utilize for good, to elevate it, to use it in positive ways, right? To do all the, the commandments and the precepts in the Torah that perfect the world, right? And perfect us as individuals in the world, but they, they require money. Can you give some specific examples? Absolutely. So when we um, buy kosher food, for example, when we pay tuition to educate our children, when we build Jewish institutions, communal institutions, right? All of the mitzvot, all of the precepts, if you think about it, they require a, a resource called money, including that precept of, of, of giving, of tithing, of tzedakah, of charity, right? Helping others. So we see how it's, it's a partnership. It's not that God is giving us the money for him. No, no, no. It's that God has given us the money as a partnership between God and man so that we can serve him in this world because that's why we're here. But of course, that also includes us, like how as individuals we perform that, everybody in their distinct way, right? We all shine in different ways. So somebody shines maybe in hosting guests, right? They spend a lot of their financial resources in that beautiful capacity. Somebody shines in helping people get education, right? So they use a lot of their financial resources in the, that capacity. So in essence, really, the pursuit of wealth is really a holy pursuit. Absolutely. And to your point, when we talk about, often we get the question, like, is money um, intrinsically good or intrinsically bad? And the yeah. question is, it's neither. Really, money is in the realm of the neutral. We consider in Judaism, there's things that are holy, there's things that are neutral, and there's, th there's things that are completely untouchable. You can't, you can't elevate them in, in no way, right? Most of what you and I interact with during our daily lives is in the realm of the neutral. Money is one of those things that we can use it to reveal God's presence in the world. We can elevate it to the realm of holiness, 
or God forbid, we can downgrade it and use it for the negative. Um, so there's nothing inherently good or bad about money. Really, it's what man does with it. And as Jews, we have been charged with a, with a responsibility to use it, to elevate it, to use it for the good, to advance again God's mission to perfect the world. For example, I could always, I always say that, Normative personal finance says there are four ways to alloc allocate your money, right? You can save it, invest it, spend it, or give it. Mm. Well, that last one, give it, is very nice, but it's the last one because that's what normative personal finance says. If you have left over, whatever's left. Exactly. If you're a leftover. kind individual, you share it with others. Judaism takes this paradigm and flips it on its head. We Jews give first. There's a mitzvah of ma'aser, of tithing, where we give 10% of our earnings to charity. It's not our money. It's for us to distribute to those in need. We've been gifted with that money. We have no, we have, we can't take any credit for that, right? Again, for none of the money, but like it's for other people. Then you take care of yourself. You save, you invest, and you spend, right? So it, the whole framework, framework is completely different, but I'll tell you something more. The framework, okay, of giving, saving, spending, and, spe and saving, investing, and spending has a foundation, and this foundation is very important, and that is called trust in God. Mm. Without that foundation, the whole system is weak, and that's also distinctly Jewish, meaning we have absolute and exclusive confidence and trust that God Almighty is the only source of the money. And so the numbers and the technical part are just the mechanics, the motions that we have to go through in the natural world because God said, part of trusting me is that you work in this world, in the natural world, with the understanding that that's just what I created for you to work with, but that I am the one enlivening everything and allowing everything to happen all the time. So the results are always in God's hands, not in mine. It's just that I have a responsibility to put in effort in this work, understanding that there's no causality, right? The effort doesn't yield the result. The effort is independent of the result because only God Almighty can give the results. So yeah, Al, based on everything that you shared, do you think there's a correlation between that and the statistics that Jews are, let's say, less than 1% um, of the population? And there are so many, especially, wealthy Jews. Oh, I love that. So listen, I'm not surprised that that is the case because the reality is that God chose the Jewish nation to make a home for him in this world and perfect the world, right? He gave us a blueprint, he gave us a Torah that will lay out how to elevate this world and bring it to its ultimate perfection. Everybody has a role here. The Jews have that role. And obviously the non-Jewish nations also have a role to play. So with that role, God gives us resources to fulfill that mission. So we already have to keep we have to keep that in mind that there's a distinct mission for the Jewish people or for of perfecting the world. In order to fulfill that mission, God gives us resources. Among those resources is money, right? Because that is one of the most powerful tools that we have in the physical world to impart change, right? But there's also creativity, there's also wisdom, there's also sensitivity, there's empathy, which Jews happen to have a lot of that too, right? So it's not surprising that that is the case. Now, that being said, it does every Jewish person who's been blessed with wealth use it in a positive way? Perhaps not, but that is God's ways. We don't understand God's ways. What we do know is that we've been, we've been given as a nation a tremendous responsibility with that mission, right? And with that responsibility, God gave us the resources to fulfill it. Now, we also have free choice on how to do it, but thankfully, we have a blueprint on how to relate to that money, how to think about money, how to speak about money, and how to behave with that money in order to fulfill the vision and the mission. Thank you so much for joining us here today. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. And if you did, then please go ahead and subscribe to this YouTube channel to get more great Jewish content.